Hello friends, let's talk wearable health technology, uh, heart rate uh, monitors, and how to get the data from you know, these, these, these wearables uh, into Python and visualizing them in cool ways. I recently got this, this is the Fitbit uh, Alta, Alta HR. Uh, you know, it's a very simple, discreet, inexpensive device. That's what I liked it. I like about it because I'm interested in the heart rate data. But this should work. This should apply to any of the competing competing devices, uh, including the latest version of the Apple Watch. Uh, as long as you know how to get the the data from your watch to the server and the server into down back into a comma delimited file. That's what we need in order to work it in Python. Of course, uh, you know these devices are not a substitute for you know medical grade electrocardiograms. I mean, I think we, we all we all know that already. So, welcome to Viral Mail. My name is Manuel Amonartiki. I'm the author of Monetizing Machine Learning. This is a book that helps you take your machine learning models and exporting them uh, to the web, so the entire world can access them and even you know monetize uh, your work. Uh, you can find that book along with my other books on Amazon. Simply put my name, Manuel Amonartiki, in the Amazon search bar, and you'll see all the books. And I appreciate your support. So, uh, this device, the the uh, you know the the Fitbit Alta, can do more than just uh, take uh, your heart rate. It can also you know it has time, and it also has a pedometer. It can it cal it takes keeps track of them the amount of steps you take every day. And I like this because I walk every morning from my office from my home to my office. It's about a forty minute walk, and then I walk back. And we clearly see that in the heart charts, uh, heart rate chart. There's going to be spikes when I start my commute. So it's very interesting to see. For those who don't have this kind of device, uh, or don't know how to, you know, who have one but don't know how to get into a CSV, I'll also include one day's worth of my heart rate data so you can follow along with the example and the code uh, and all that, and all the links are, you know, in the description of the video. So, let's get to it. Uh, so the, 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 there are different ways you can get data from, you know, these devices. You know, first got to sync up to your mobile device, so it kind of transfers the, the data to the server. And I'm going to use um, the, uh, oh, one thing I need to mention, this video is going to be classified under the health category, the health tab right here. So the tool I use is from Neil Ritchie. Uh, he, uh, you know, he has figured out the, um, the Fitbit API, so he's done the hard work for us. And he graciously has uh, the app amongst other apps, and I recommend you check them out. Uh, in uh, you know available, and you can publicly just you know uh, use it. It's it's a web app. All you got to do is go there. You sign in with your account, so you get you have to give permission to the app to access uh, your Fitbit account, which is you know obvious. And simply select the date. You can do per minute, per second. I'm doing per second, and you hit get data, and it's going to get the data and chart it. Here you clearly see uh, midnight to midnight. You see that you know here I'm sleeping, I'm deep sleep here, and here are this my commutes. Uh, the spikes are my commute, as you know either uh, you know uh, you know going to uh, taking my kids to school or going to work and coming back. Uh, going back home, right? And this is like some solid work time. So very interesting to see that in the chart format. So this will download that data. Make sure you point. Uh, the Jupyter Notebook, where uh, we're going to be analyzing the code to, uh, right, to, to point to that CSV that you just downloaded. Uh, if you've been following my, my stock market uh, videos, we're using exact same type of code. Right? We're going to be taking that CSV, which is basically a time series of our heart, right, this over time, and applying it the same way that we would apply, uh, uh, we would, you know, use stock market data, this exact same way. So I'm picking a date. We're going to pick the 14th of March. Uh, and uh, we are going to uh, kind of uh, uh, we're going to change the time to be uh, to the, the, the when you download it raw. I'll just have a time. We want to get a time and date. It's going to be easier to read, and we're going to cast it to a date time in Python. Very simple to do. Um, here, let me run it. Make sure it works here. Yep. And we see here we get a time, right? Date and a time. Uh, this is uh, supposedly second by second data, but it looks like you know it's giving you whatever it has, uh, the smallest scale it has, and it's fine for our needs. And you know we have a heart rate. Okay. First thing we're going to do is plot it on a normal matplotlib chart. Super simple, right? Uh, and this is it, right? So we we are formatting the date to make sure it looks you know semi decent the way we want it. Uh, and you can play around with that. Here we see it was going from midnight to midnight. Uh, we see the you know me falling asleep, deep sleep here, uh, right around 5, 5.30 a.m. and kind of the wake up routine. 
the work routine and the going back home routine and then back to sleep, right? So it's very interesting to see. It's very, um, when I started doing this, I, I, I like to sleep eight hours a day. So I go to bed, I try to always have eight hours in my bed. And um, the, the mobile app has a pretty nice uh, view of your night. And it was interesting to see that then I'm not getting eight hours. Even if you're in bed eight hours, you don't get, you know, solid eight hours. There's interruptions, you know, you go into deep light sleep, sometimes even awake. And it's interesting that my eight hours are more like seven hours. I was a bit disappointed there. Uh, but over the weekends, I, you know, by being in bed nine hours, I can get eight hours of sleep. So it's interesting, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of analyze our nights. So that's the simple view, right? So it's a bit hard to see because it's very, you know, it's very jaggedy. It goes up and down. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, exactly like I would do with stock market data is take the percentage change. So Pandas has a percent PCT underscore change and you simply take the time series and you take the percentage change. So if it goes up, it'll be a percentage, a positive number. If it, if, if it goes down, it'll be a negative number. And then you're going to have data over a, that's going to go up and down around a zero line. And that's what we do here. I am on top of this, we're going to add, uh, after we do the percentage change, we're going to add a 10 period uh, rolling window or moving average, however you want to call it. And it's going to smooth the spikes a bit. So let's see what it looks like. So here we see we're clearly going up and down, you know, the zero line. And we see, you know, again, the, the, the waking up, the, the commute spikes. Uh, we can add more. We can do like a 500 moving average and we're really going to smooth it. Where are you? Let's see what shows. Look at that. We're clearly seeing you know, raising rates uh, up to my commute and then it just a drop when I'm working, slowly rising and you know commute back home so you know it goes back down so you know you, you can't see stuff it's still hard to see but it's definitely an interesting way of looking at it around the percentage change the point here is you want to look at it into many different ways so that once you're when you have a, an app idea or you have a, some kind of uh, preventative health application you want to make sure you look at the data the correct way in which you know you can translate that idea using heart rate data Another way we can do it is we can apply the averaging directly to the heart rate without going through the percentage change. That's what we're going to do here. Let's do a, a 500 period of the, the raw heart rate. And we're going to assign that to heart rate MA, heart rate moving average. And where are you? And when we plot it, we're going to plot it against the raw heart rate as well. And this is what you see, right? You see the raw heart rate going up and down. And because we've smoothed this 500 periods, we're gonna lose 500 periods from the beginning. So it's a bit lagging, but it clearly shows, right? A very clean line of, you know, kind of going up as, you know, I'm doing my morning commute, going back down as I'm working and going back up for my evening commute, right? So it's an interesting way. You can also do it on its own scale. So, um, you know, one y-axis would be the raw, one y the other y-axis would be the smooth, just so you can see it a bit, bit better. And, you know, the code is a little bit more complicated. You have to use um, the AX twin X, uh, axis twin X, and that will allow you to put whatever's after this on its own axis. And that's why then you're gonna have two y-axis that data so it's going to share the time data but you know the raw is going to be here in red and the smooth is going to be here in the, the kind of the teal again not super easy to see so now we're going to get to the fun part the candlesticks is uh, uh it's used in the stock market to look at stock market time series data and it makes uh, uh, complex data very simple basically by aggregating it down to uh you know a certain time range let's say five minute bars and we can extract out of those five minutes bar just four data points and allow you to watch, to, to visualize the, the opening at that five minute period, the closing at that five minute period, and the highs and the lows, basically uh, anything that's above the open or the close and below the open or the close. So a very simple way, a way, great way of simplifying, uh, you know, complex time series data. And that's what we're gonna do here. Because it's part of the financial stock market, we actually have to install a financial, uh, uh, a finance package called MPL underscore finance and it works with matplotlib and it's going to handle a lot of that um, uh, the, visual, the visualization of the candles so you know you can do that you can do that in um, in Jupyter directly with you know exclamation point pip3 if you're using python3 install MPL underscore finance so um, 
you can we, we need to group the data first right we, 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 we want these this time series to be grouped by time so we're going to be using uh, a, a fairly uh, a handy feature called time grouper and we're doing that here so uh, here is where you assign how the period you want to group it we're going to do 30 minute bars you could do five minute bars you could do six minute bars that's simple we're going to cast the time so we're, we're working the, the we're working the the, the the date field a lot here because uh, I want it to be in one format while I'm doing the grouping and I want it to be in another format when I'm doing the plotting so for the grouping we want to drop the date we just want this time and we want it as a string right so that's what I'm doing I'm casting it as a string and I'm removing the the date part and we in a time grouper we set the time to 30 minutes and then the time grouper is a simple group by but it's a really cool group by because it's gonna allow us to get the, um, the, the the beginning of the bar, the nth zero point, the nth negative one, the last part of that five minute chunk. And in our case, I'm gonna talk 30 minute chunk, right? Well, I'm gonna use the right wording here. So we're doing 30 minute chunks of data. So the, the nth zero will be the first uh, heartbeat reading of that 30 minute chunk. The nth minus one will be the last heartbeat reading of that, that 30 minute chunk. And we're gonna ask for a low, high, and the volume. The volume is as sum. Uh, just stock market has a volume, so I went with that. We're not using it here, so ignore that part. But the low is the minimum, NumPy minimum we're gonna use, and the high NumPy max. And then we're gonna take, so these are all done with group buys and the, the time grouper. And then finally, we're going to you know uh, uh, bring all that data back together um, in, in a TMP, in, in this, 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 data, this data set called TMP, right? So, uh, uh, yeah. A little bit complex, but it's a very easy way of kind of grouping uh, data, time series data, by a certain time, and then pulling only the first and last of that time period, the highest point and the lowest point of that time period. So we, we end up with, um, uh, let me go back. So here I'm simply adding that date back to the time. It's, that's, that's because I wanted to have the date showing, because imagine if you're gonna do this on multiple days, you could use this code, because it will separate the time on multiple, over multiple days. And then I'm, I'm kind of reassigning everything to this new data frame called open, high, low, close, uh, which is very much something you use in the stock market. And I'm saying I want the date, the open, high, low, close, and the volume, though we're not gonna use the volume here. And now we finally have this uh, aggregated by 30 minute data. You see, right, it starts at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, second, and it goes 0, 0, 30 minutes and one second, right? And that's the open of the, the first 30 minutes, the close of the first 30 minutes, and a high and a low in between, right? So pretty cool, easy way of kind of getting these these uh, these uh, these uh, aggregated times uh, done in uh, in pandas. So finally, here is something I found on Stack Overflow. It's, it was a little more a little bit complicated, so I just kind of copied what I found on Stack Overflow. And thank you to this person for, for posting that. And here, uh, I, I didn't find an easy way of passing that pandas directly to. Uh, uh, to the, the matplotlib uh, code, this M MPL underscore finance package. Instead, you kind of have to uh, create an array of the data you want to show. So we're going to create this new array called open, high, low, close, uh, which is an array, right? And we're going to pass it the, the date, the open, the high, the low, and the close. And here we are simply going to plot everything we have. And now look at this. This is the end result. So these are called candles, uh, and we can see here, what I like about this kind of visualization is we clearly see, right, there's very little movement going on when I'm sleeping. We see a spike here, but it kind of, the, the open and close are right here. Uh, when the, the, the heartbeats are going down, you'll have red bars. When the heartbeats are going up over time, they'll have green bars. That means it's opening below and it's closing higher. Here it's opening high and closing low, just like the stock markets, right? Those heart it's actually heart rate data. And when I'm waking up, my wake up routine, look, everything starts spiking, big movements. We see a big green bar, big red bar, green bar, big red, uh, big red bars, right? So you, you, very simply, right? This is very easy to read compared to, right? Compared to this. This is complicated to read. This is very easy to read. So that's all I want to show you really, is, is a way of, of creating this candlestick. So I, I know I flew over it and, and it's, it, it can be a little bit complicated, but um, go through the code, take your time. Uh, here we're doing some kind of, uh, it's showing you a way of taking you know, complex heart rate data and simplifying it in a way you can quickly visualize, see what's going on, but it doesn't have to be open, high, low, close. It could be the 25th percentile, the 75th percentile. It could be the mean versus the median. There's plenty of ways 
of aggregating this data so to simplify it so that then you can create whatever web applications, whatever alerts you want around that data, right? And that's the whole point here. So here, you know, I like to see these big green bars. I know, for example, uh, you know, just thinking out loud, uh, overall, there is a range. The heart is always working in a range. On average, that range seems to be, between, in my case, between 60 and 80 beats per minute. I could say anytime it goes above, right, I know it's gonna come back down, right? If it doesn't, there could be an alert, something is wrong. Or whenever it's below, right, I know I'm sleeping, depending on the size, and I know I'm gonna go back up when I wake up. And if it doesn't, you can do an alert, right? So plenty of little applications that, 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 that you could think of. Um, uh, one last thing before I end, uh, if you if you are uh, interested in this kind of work of doing uh, you know wearables with heart with, with heart rate uh, monitoring heart rate modeling, uh, and you want to partner with this, you know please get in touch with me because I would like to partner with others doing this kind of work. I have a few ideas. Uh, be interested in hearing about other people's ideas. And I think you know anything in that in, in health and in preventive health, uh, I think this would be a great tool to kind of you know create something interesting that could help people. So get in touch with me. Uh, you know, uh, if you don't know my, my email address by now, it's my last name at gmail.com. So I'm gonna take you at gmail.com. And thanks for watching.